Well, good morning, friends. It is uh, Wednesday, the 23rd uh, of August. Hope you are doing well today. Uh, today, for our reading from the book of Psalms, we'll be looking at 88, Psalm 88. Uh, this is a psalm that is very clearly coming from a dark place. It's a uh, place of despair. Uh, we've talked a lot about the various kinds of psalms and how they come to us and how they uh, the, how they come from all sorts of different places in life, truly the spectrum of, of human experience. And this is one uh, from somebody who is, um, you know, you almost get the sense that, that this person's at his wit's end, has uh, experienced so much negative, uh, difficult uh, types of situations. And and they're at a place of, of just crying out. This is a crying out psalm. It's a lament psalm. It's a raw emotion, Lord, are you going to do anything about my situation type of psalm? And so we'll be looking at that. Uh, for our gospel reading, we'll be continuing on in Mark uh, chapter 11, following Jesus uh, on the way to Jerusalem. So let's look at Psalm 88. Psalm 88. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all of your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness, or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkest Darkness is my closest friend. It's clearly a difficult psalm played in a difficult place in life. This is actually one of the few psalms of lament that actually doesn't resolve. It doesn't end up in a place of hope or a place of possibility. It really sort of ends just in that place, that place of despair. It ends with this line, you have taken my friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Uh, you know, so many times we read these hard psalms and at the end we get you know, a glimpse of hope or possibility, and uh, you just don't have that here. And you know, that's 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 how life is in some situations, right? So we are left looking for for the hope of God in the midst of the psalm itself, and it it is there. And the simple fact that the prayer is being prayed indicates a uh, a certain trust that God is still. Um, present enough to be prayed to, if you will. Uh, and, and, and sometimes that's what we get. Sometimes that's the amount of faith that, that we get in these psalms. So very real uh, connects with us in a, in a very real way. All right, let's take a look today at Mark 11, verses 27 through chapter 12, verse, tw uh, verse 12. Now again, they came, that's they, the disciples, they came to Jerusalem as he, that's Jesus, was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Answer me. 
They argued with one another. They said, if we say from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? But shall we say of human origin? They were afraid of the crowd, for all regarded John as truly a prophet. So they answered, Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. Then Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, built a watchtower, and then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, and they beat him, and they sent him away empty-handed. And again he sent another slave to him, this one they beat over the head, and they insulted him. Then he sent another one, and this one they killed. And so it was with many others, some they beat, and others they killed. He still had one other, a beloved son. And so finally he sent him to them, saying, Well, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Now, when they realized that they had told this parable against them, uh, that he had told this parable against them, they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd. So they left him, and they went away. Uh, Join me in our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life which we have received by your grace and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially, God, we thank you for the love of our families, the affection of our friends, for strength and abilities to serve your purpose today, for this community in which we live, for opportunities to give as we have received. I invite you to lift up your own prayer of thanksgiving. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others, commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Christ. Today we pray for those closest to us, our friends, our families, our neighbors. We pray for refugees, for homeless men and children and women. We pray, God, for the outcast and the persecuted. We pray for those from whom we are estranged, Lord. We pray for the church in Africa. Friends, I invite you to lift up your own prayers of intercession. God of our salvation is the light of morning dawns. Heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and to grow in faith, that we might bear good fruit for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, friends, great to be with you this morning. Um, I encourage you to continue to, to be looking for God in the midst of whatever is going on in your life, whether it be uh, good moments in your life or difficult ones. Know that God is is with us, that God is working in our lives, and that God desires the fullness of life uh, This, uh, you know, as we live out our days. And so I pray that you see that and know it and that it changes who you are this day.
We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.